non-fiction reading recommendations. No, th don't run away. Don't run away. Everyone on booktube seems to be under reading non-fiction and I am here to give you 10 different books that I think you may actually enjoy. Okay? And I will also tell you guys about the book that I most recommend for fiction readers. Lots of people think that non-fiction is too intimidating, it's too hard to read, there's too much going on, and so they don't even venture into that part of the library, the bookshop, the Kindle library, whatever you do to find your books. And I think that it's such a shame because there are so many amazing non-fiction books here. But also, if you do like non-fiction, here are ten of my favourites. They're not all my favourites, but ten of my favourites that I highly recommend you add to your TBR if you haven't read them yet. These are all in my opinion, easy reads, and I will mention when I think that they are slightly more difficult so you know exactly what you're getting into. I need to make sure I don't just natter on about volcanoes. I can do that. It's a, it's a problem. I have some that are about individuals and some that are about broader concepts. So, let's start with the individuals, because this is not something that I think most people would expect me to recommend, and that is Call the Midwife by Jennifer Worth. This book Oh, the whole series makes me cry. These are memoirs from a midwife in 1950s London and oh my god. The name may ring a bell because the BBC made a beautiful TV series. The first season is a direct adaptation of the books and is absolutely gorgeous and was signed off by, by Jenny Worth. Interrupted by my partner having the audacity to come up the stairs. Ah, fuck it. This book doesn't shy away of going into the darker and harder aspects of being a nurse and a midwife in the community. They did not just help mothers giving birth and mothers preparing to, but also other people in the community. This will make you cry, it will tear your heart out, and it will really expose what it was like at the time. Fantastic book and fantastic TV series, like mwah. Now let's swap for a general one. This one is a kid's book, and that is Stolen History by Sathanam Sangra. They have also done a book called Empire Land, which is a non-fiction for adults, but I haven't read it yet, so I can't recommend it. This, however, fantastic. If you read any British non-fiction as a kid, you know exactly what to expect from this. It's funny, it's poignant, it uses modern day events to kind of mash things together, and it taught me stuff, which is perfect. So yes, I do recommend this for adults. This is an absolutely fantastic condensed but without leaving out the details and without leaving out the more difficult subjects history of the United Kingdom as an empire and what it did and its colonial history and how that has impacted so many places around the world. I cannot recommend this highly enough. It's a fantastic introduction to this, the subject. If a child is reading it, it will give them a base to f like form the foundations of their entire relationship to colonialism and the former empire. And as an adult, it really opened my eyes to some things that I was very surprised that I didn't learn about in school, to an extent we understand the school system, and also that I just didn't know already as someone who considered themselves fairly educated about colonialism. Really recommend. Also did not like the fact that they mentioned Marcus Rashford as a common figure when he is younger than me. I'm getting old. Okay, back to books about people. This one is a more difficult read, okay? But if you can handle that, it's fantastic. This is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. I will preface this by saying that it is a white woman writing about a black woman. I think she does this with as much empathy and with as much sensitivity as a white American woman can writing about a black American woman. Know that going in. Henrietta Lacks had cancer. Her cancer cells were continuously replicating, which is what cancer cells do, but they did it more than others. I'm simplifying here. These cells have then been used to create countless vaccinations, treatments, cures, everything for the rest of humanity. If you are alive today, you have most likely had some sort of drug, injection, whatever, that has come and been developed from HeLa, Henrietta Lacks, cells. And she did not consent to this, she did not get any monetary recompensation for this, she died in pain, in poverty, and her family was still in poverty. I think until very recently, I think they got a monetary settlement, but I don't know how much it was, and it's definitely not worth everything that the healer cells have done for humanity. So this one is a bit more of a, an in-depth book, both, both because of the topic of medical racism in the United States, and also because of the topic of healer cells, they do explain it a bit to you. It doesn't go too much in-depth, it's not a science book, but it will explain it to you, so it's a harder read. But if you can deal with that, 
I really highly recommend. It gives you a great foundation if you don't already know to understand more about the treatment of black Americans in the medical system. Healer cells are still used to this day and whilst that is amazing it's also atrocious. It is amazing because it's fantastic what they've been able to do for the planet and for every single person on it but there was no consent to those cells being stored. It's a very complicated topic, I highly recommend. Sticking with the topic of racism but moving across the pond, this is Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. So this is based in the United Kingdom by a British author and this is all about racism here in the UK. We see a lot discussed about racism in the United States and it is horrendous there but it's not not here. <laughs> we do have a fair amount of racism in the UK. I mean even our Prime Minister, who himself is not white, is racist. And the racism and classism in the UK are... it's a complicated topic and it's complicated enough as someone who is white to explain classism. Only classism. When you then integrate racism into the mix. It's incredibly complicated. Renée Lodge does a fantastic job there explaining it in a very short book. Edward Lodge herself is a black woman so this is written from a first person lived experience. I highly highly recommend this. I originally read this on ebook so I didn't know how, how short it was and I flew through it and was very surprised at that. It's a fantastic introduction to British based racism and I highly highly recommend. Then we're moving on to the Holocaust and that is the book called Night by Elie Wiesel. This is his memoir of his time in concentration camps. This is a dark book. Luckily it's very thin. It's a very difficult read. It's very easy to read. The language is absolutely fine. Uh, his wife did a beautiful translation into English but it is a tough topic to read about but I highly recommend it. And I do think that it is notable that we should not forget the genocide that occurred. We should not forget this holocaust that occurred against a group of people. I unfortunately have not yet read any Palestinian non-fictions, so I can't recommend any. I have read a Palestinian fiction, which is minor detail, which I highly recommend. It's about real life events, but it is a fiction book. Uh, but yes, I stand with Palestine. I don't care if that means this video gets no views. It is a genocide. And I think that it's very important to... ironic, cruelly ironic though it is, to read stories about people who faced a holocaust and a genocide and see how that matches up because history repeats itself. And it's doing so now and people are dying. Now for another topical read and that is one about apartheid. This is Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela. This is his memoir, his autobiography. This is a big book. It's huge. However, I read all of this in one day because I could not put the book down. It is really well written. Mandela writes it beautifully and it has a lot of discussions on apartheid, on the segregation of people by race or by other means and again this is very relevant right now but also it is written very very well. It is a big book but it's not just me that says it's readable, it's not just me because I have um, a track record for this, shut up. If you haven't been watching the Total Bollocks live streams you're missing out but the lovely Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe has also read this one and agrees with me that it reads a lot faster than you would be expecting. It's not like the writing is especially big, it just reads so much quicker than you would anticipate this book to read. I don't know why, it just does. It's just so gripping. I couldn't put it down. It starts from the beginning with Mandela in the Xhosa community in South Africa and how that then developed to him being on the global stage. It is a fantastic book. I know it's huge, I'm aware it's huge, but I think you should add it onto your radar. But I highly recommend and you will probably just find yourself unable to put the damn thing down because it's, it's so good. The chapters are short as well which mwah, mm. Next we have The Five by Hallie Rubenhold and this is about all of the women who were murdered and their murders were attributed to Jack the Ripper. This follows them as far back as Rubenhold could trace them um, to their childhoods and discovers how they ended up to be living in the slums of London. Some of them coming from what would be considered very respectable and well-to-do backgrounds that you would not expect them to end up in the slums. This really humanises all of these women and brings another level to them more than just they were harlots. The vast majority of them were not, but even if they were, why does that 
decrease their humanity. So this is a really really interesting book. It's just interesting to see how much research she's been able to do into these women who no one cared about at the time. So she must have had to do so much in-depth research to get this information. Uh, it's also a really good look into this area of the London slums at this point in time. It's a fantastic book and I think we should remember the names much better of Polly, Anne, Elizabeth, Catherine and Mary Jane. Then we have Ace by Angela Chen. This is a book all about the asexual community and this is the entire umbrella of asexuality written by a member of the asexual community and this is absolutely fantastic. The author herself is also Asian so she talks about the kind of combination of being non-white and also being non-straight and how that intersectionality impacts her life and she interviews a lot of other people from different branches of the ace umbrella and also different races so white black asian indigenous and this is just a fantastic read very short very easily readable i couldn't put this down i was walking home from a doctor's appointment like this for 45 minutes because I couldn't put the book down. This is a fantastic read and I highly recommend because asexuality is one of those branches of the LGBTQ plus community that is downplayed and I don't want to say ignored but um, not as in the spotlight. Okay just two books left. I'm Glad My Mum Died by Janet McCurdy. I, like most people who picked this up, read it because I loved iCarly when I was a kid. Jeanette was playing Sam in the show. I adored the show when I was younger. I was singing the theme tune, theme tune to my partner the other night who was too old for iCarly and was just looking at me in confusion while I'm there like I know you see somehow the world will change for me and be so wonderful. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Anyway, before I get too into that, um, but Jeanette had a really tough life which, you know, sounds like oh of course she didn't know she really did. She was forced into being a child star, her mother gave her an eating disorder, her mother abused her, and it goes into all of this and explains her relationship to this now as an adult and how she is trying to tackle this and kind of being able to see her mum for who she truly was, which is a woman who loved her but who also abused her. I had my own personal reasons for really relating to this memoir and so for me it was a different meaning but I think that one this is a very good book to touch on child stardom, to touch on eating disorders, parental abuse, so many topics. As always content warnings are in the descriptions for all of these books. These will have quite a few given the nature of the topics uh, but it's also just written very well. If you want to you can listen to the audiobook which is read by Jeanette herself so you'll get like the full intention of her words and it's just a really easily read book. You feel like she is your friend just talking to you about her life. This is probably the book that I would most recommend here yep, to people who don't read nonfiction. This is it. This is the one I would recommend. This is the book because it is just so incredibly accessible and also we'll talk about topics that are so important in such an easily accessible way. So I highly, highly recommend this one. And then the final book. I think anyone who actually knows me was uh, waiting on this one and that is Super Volcanoes by Robin George Andrews. Yes I have a volcanology book on here. Now I did my masters in geohazards so obviously for me reading about this topic is a bit different for other people however this book is incredibly accessible. I have made Carrie from Caring for Books read it and she read it and she loved it. It is genuinely just really it's written with humour, written with clear explanations and understanding. This is just really well written, really well explained and it's also just, for me at least, fascinating. But also it's not just normal volcanoes. There are volcanoes that have black lava. There are volcanoes that have really low temperature lava and we don't know oh, mm, 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 space lava. So yeah, I know that this is a bit more niche but like one, this cover is beautiful and two, it delves into so many different volcanoes. It's so interesting to kind of see how all these different volcanoes are on the planet and how they will form and Robin George Andrews is British so it is filled with British humour as standard. Uh, so yeah I won't go on about that too much because I'm always worried about going on too much uh, about anything to do with volcanoes but uh, I loved that book. Five stars. And this is my 
non-fiction recommendation stack. These are the books that I think that you should try and read if you don't usually like to read non-fiction. We've got a variety of different topics here. We've got memoirs, we've got books about sexuality, about life, about regimes, uh, about medical topics, about colonisation, about volcanoes. It is a very big mix and so hopefully there will be something here that appeals to you. I promise there will be a non-fiction book out there that you will love. Please try and find it this non-fiction November and if you do or if you already have a non-fiction book that you love or are planning to read let me know down in the comments below because I am always looking to add to my non-fiction shelves. They are never big enough. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching folks. If you'd like to see what I have set as my TBR for non-fiction November you can watch that video up there and if you'd like to see how I manage with that TBR I'd recommend hitting the subscribe button so that you are ready and waiting when my video comes out at the very beginning of December. Fingers crossed this has encouraged some of you to pick up a few more non-fiction books and I'll see you folks in the next video. Bye!